Hey guys, so this morning I want to talk to you a little bit about performance profiling. The first time most people interact with performance profiling tools is when their house is on fire in a production environment and that's really a scary place to be and most people don't really know what to do. So the reason for this is kind of simple. Um, really, people don't performance profile their code. Unless you're running you know, something really, really big, it doesn't tend to come up that often. But when it does, you can be stuck with a situation where you've got CPU spikes on your production servers and you really don't know how to go forwards. So if you'd have asked me to performance profile some code, say five years ago, I'd have probably felt lost. I'd have been scrambling around Google trying to find tips and it would have been a pretty stressful situation. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to walk you through a really trivial ASP.NET MVC app. When I say trivial, I mean it doesn't do anything at all. And I'm going to show you how a performance problem can be introduced and how you can discover it, detect it, and solve it. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use JetBrains' dot trace. Yep, dot trace. Um, I can never remember the name of all the tools. And I'm going to use that to show you how you can really trivially get some performance metrics on a little piece of code. So what I've got here in front of me is a, a copy of Visual Studio with a standard MVC app. So if I go into the app start, uh, folder you'll notice that I'm using Ninject. I've not actually done anything at all with Ninject, I'm just using it to inject um, some specific types that I'm going to declare to fake a performance problem. So I'm going to close that up. So everything starts here in the home controller. There are three dependencies, I'm doing absolutely nothing with them and returning a default view. So if I, if I hit F5 here, you can see a browser pop up and it says hello page nothing. So you'll notice that there was a little bit of a delay there and the reason that there was a delay is I've got some dependencies. So if I go into dependency 1 here you'll see it does nothing. Dependency 2 has a sneaky thread sleep for 250 milliseconds and dependency 3 has a 20 millisecond sleep. So there's nothing particularly significant about these things, you know, the kind of typical um, server bound processing times that you might find in some of your components in your in your project. I'm going to stop this now. Um, the, the first thing that you, you might want to do if you, you're you running into a performance problem is make sure you've got the right tools. So dot trace is pretty good. Um, the, the reasons that it's good is you can run it in a development environment, it's fairly cheap, um, but importantly you can also attach it to IIS. So if you have a problem in production whilst it's not the happiest place to be, um, you could attach to IS in production and gather performance snapshots. Um, the really cool thing is you can then go and save those snapshots and import them to your development environment and use them to debug the the, the stack traces that dot trace will give you. There's a lot of other really nice integration points so it'll, if you have the PDBs available it'll actually show you the code so you can kind of see a line by line expression of where your your hotspots are in your application. Either way, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a tool called JMeter, which is a really simple free load testing tool from the Apache project. I'm going to gather a quick snapshot of some performance. So first I'm just going to run this website, pop up in Chrome. So a couple of things to know about JMeter. Um, JMeter's UI appears to have been designed by somebody who probably thinks himself a scientist. I don't know who it was, whether it was a committee. It's an incredible tool but it looks terrible and it's really really hard to use so I'm going to leave that running and pull up a copy of JMeter now. So this is kind of what greets you. You're not going to have fun but we'll, we'll work through it. The real simple thing to do, you've got to add first a thread group. So a thread group is the way JMeter simulates its numbers of users. So as an aside I'm running this in IS Express and there's certain limitations about how many concurrent users run here so don't, um, don't see these, these numbers as any particular performance metrics. Um, so you make a, th a thread group which specifies the number of threads, the ramp up period and the loop count. So the number of threads is your number of fake users, the loop count effectively is the number of requests they're going to make each. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to whack 10 in there and 10 in there and stick a ramp up period of 10 seconds. All this means is it gives you a good way to simulate how real traffic works rather than 10 users appearing at the same time they'll kind of ramp up over the seconds. You'll see it running in a second. Now that I've got my thread group, I'm going to add a HTTP request. So the UI for this is 
terrible. And it's in here somewhere. It'll be in, I believe, a listener. No, here it is. It's <laughs> terrible. Samplers, samplers, of course. You had samplers, then you had listeners to listen to the results of samplers. So here it is. There's a HTTP request. And you get granted this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful user experience. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my uh, my running browser here. I'm just going to restart this for the sake of argument. Pick up this information. Jump back into JMeter. And pop those pieces of information into these boxes. So it's worth noting that if you stick HTTP or any other protocol in the server name, it'll all crap out and you don't want to be there. Um, so that all this is doing is requesting home with 10 users 10 times. In order to actually see the results, you need to add a listener. So I'm going to drop in view results in table down here. And then I'm going to drop in a little visualizer, which is kind of cool. Uh, the spline visualizer. Great. So now if I hit run here, it'll nag me to save my plan. That's fine, let's just overwrite that default. And now we're running. So what you can do is you can click on view results and table and you can see the requests as they're accruing, the, the sample time from the start point. If we scroll down here a little bit, you get the averages and the deviation, the number of samples recorded. If you hit the spline visualizer, you get all sorts of averages about incoming requests and minimum time to serve. Very cool, you get this. I'm just going to leave this running for hopefully not too long. It should finish soon. And we're done. Number of samples 100. So now you've seen how we can throw together a JMeter benchmark for a simple MVC application. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use dot trace to, to profile it. Um, at the moment, we noticed when we ran it there was only a, a moderate delay, nothing you wouldn't expect. So I'm not expecting to see anything here. So what you can do is you can use the dot trace menu from Visual Studio and you can profile the startup project. Just using the built-in Visual Studio web server here. So I can just hit run. It's worth noting that also works with IS Express. So what you'll notice is I now have this get snapshot, drop snapshot, detach from process menu. Don't worry about that. It's obviously spun up our website. Now what I'm going to go and do is jump back to our install of JMeter. So now as you can see we've started to actually gather request information. So I'm going to let this run through to the end. And when we get 100 samples we'll be able to see what the performance profile output actually looks like. And here we go, we've done 100 samples. So if I now minimize JMeter I can hit get snapshot. Get snapshot get snapshot. And now we get a very very large dot trace window. So understanding the dot trace window isn't as convoluted as it initially looks. What you're going to see here is a list of all the threads that were working in your application while the profiler was running and their complete elapsed time of execution. So there's some really cool things that you can actually look into here. So you can see the hotspots. So in a sufficiently large application, you'll see useful hotspots. What we're actually seeing here is the hottest point of the system is in the Ninjet kernel itself, where it's resolving its dependencies. So this actually makes sense, because if you remember when we went through our dependencies, there were some deliberate thread sleeps there. And over a sufficient amount of requests, these things will rise to the top of an application. So when you're using a container, the, act the activation tree of your components will be a little less explicit than you'd normally expect. And seeing as most applications actually use containers, this is going to be a common problem people will work into. So you can either dig through specific threads in here. So it's ordered in threads that take the longest first. Obviously all these are going to more or less be the same, but you notice there's, there's actually nothing in here. So what I'm going to do now is dig through the Ninject activation context and see what it's actually taking all its time doing. When you open up these node elements, you're going to see an aggregated view of all calls to this particular set of methods. So you notice that get service is where the, 
the grunt work is actually happening and further down in this create. So the, the trick here is if you right click on get service you can open all method instances merged. What this will do is it will show you that from that point in the stack trace down the percentage time from that method invocation. So what we're going to see is of all the calls to get service which is now the new 100% what is taking the time so we drop down and it's really obvious that this create method is where all the time is going over those 100 requests. So what I tend to do there is again open all method instances merged. And now all of a sudden you see your code. So obviously there's no PDBs here at the moment for, for Ninjet because I've not discovered them. But all of a sudden when we look at the thing that's ranked at 92% dependency 2's constructor is being highlighted as the bulk of the cost of the operation followed by dependency 3, which is exactly what you'd expect with a with a 20 millisecond sleep and a 250 millisecond sleep respectively. So that's great, we now understand where the time is being spent in our requests. What I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce a performance bottleneck and we'll do the same exercise again and you'll see exactly how it shows up. So all I'm going to do is go to my home controller and do something that everybody can do very very naturally take out dependency 3, don't need that anymore and I'm going to add in the conspicuously named slow dependency so if we jump into slow dependency it has a 5 second thread sleep which is an Aeon in uh, internet time so if I hit run now in Google Chrome page takes a long time and we're still waiting, we're still waiting and there we go so if I now hit F5 I'm going to have exactly the same problem so now we're in the situation where we know there's a performance problem in our application and we only know that because we just put it there but pretend that we didn't know that, pretend that, that somebody had added some kind of heavy constructor injected dependency into a controller on your web app and your operations team call you up and say that your CPU is spiking very very high so a common example where something like this would would explicitly happen is that if there were a dependency that had a five second thread sleep in all of your ASP.NET IAS worker threads would start bottlenecking and backing up and requests would slow down so say your operations team had some monitoring tools that showed them the average performance time on, on your web farm, they would see that rise and potentially it should, should ring some alarm bells. So given that situation, and given our slow dependency, let's see if we can find out where that, where that bottleneck is again. So I'm going to do exactly what I did last time, I'm going to hit dot trace, and I'm going to tell it to profile my startup application. Hit the same window again, and we're going to hit run again and we get Chrome pops up again and we get our nice little dot trace performance profiler and you'll notice we can see our bottleneck on local so I'm going to hit F5 again in case you missed it and that's going to take 5 seconds plus a little bit of overhead now we've we've got dot trace running so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump back to JMeter and I'm going to rerun those results so first we're just going to clear all and then we're going to run our thread group, thread group again and it's running, you can see the stop sign but you'll see now that our request is taking much much longer and we've not really changed any of the settings, we're still number of threads 10 with a ramp up period of 10 seconds with 10 requests a thread but this is going to take a very very long time because we've got 5 seconds between and during the ramp up period all these threads are just kind of hanging So what we're going to do now is we're going to wait for these threads to complete and we'll take a look at what it looks like in dot trace. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to stop this here. Um, we've done 56 samples and if we take a look at the spline visualizer you can see how the maximum request time is now starting to spiral up because of all the, the thread sleeps. So if I just stop the execution here I'm going to whack get snapshot 
in the dot trace control panel here. And now collect all the data and open the performance monitor. So if I hit hotspots again, again look a whopping 33% of the time is in the Ninject activation. So if we do exactly the same thing we did before, we open it up, we see get services taking all the time, we open all method instances merged, and then we can see that this create method over here is taking the vast majority of the time. And here we go, slow dependencies constructor taking 95% of the time with all 95% of that time being found in the thread sleep, which is both highlighted in the view code source here. You can also see the decompiled source, I believe. But because we've got the PDD, PDBs, we don't need to. And then there's still 4% in the dependency too. So that's ultimately how you discover a hotspot in the code. So I'm going to close all this stuff down now because we don't need any more. So that really is how I would recommend using a performance profiler to find the, the dubious place, pieces of code in your code base. Um, I would recommend doing it if you have a fear that something you're working on is not performing well enough, either just through visual or through potentially seeing your, you know, your, your task monitor reporting CPU spikes or high memory usage. You kind of, it'll give you a, a first indication of where the problems might be. I've certainly found this very, very helpful in a production environment. Um, if anyone's wondering how we did it, the, the general approach is if you have a multi-node environment, pull one node out of the pool, install the, the performance monitoring tools on that node itself, start it capturing, and then put it back into the pool for nothing more than a couple of minutes. If you've got something that's seriously degrading your performance on production, you should be able to pick up enough data in that time to then ship the dot trace output onto a development machine and rifle through the stack traces to find out where your hotspots really are. I wouldn't recommend leaving a node in the pool monitored for you know anything more than five or ten minutes depending on your traffic load because it does significantly decrease the performance of the the node itself. Um, it's very useful um, hopefully it'll bail you out of any really really tricky situations without too much troubleshooting too much wrangling around the code and too much stress.